Dear viewers, welcome to this episode of Expert Speaks. There are a lot of questions, lots of doubts in the minds of people about the PAN card. When should you have a PAN card? Can I have a duplicate PAN card? What if I lose a PAN card? When should I apply for it? Is there a resident state that is attached to a PAN card? Countless questions which are there in the minds of people when it comes to the question of PAN card. In this episode, I am going to ask questions to the expert of the week, Chartered Accountant Sri Ram Ra. I have collected here 12 points which you must know about the PAN card. Watch this episode till the end of the program. Each and every point I have discussed, the 12 of them are equally important. This is NRN Clinic for you and I am Dr. Chandra Khan, but your financial guide for a happy living. NRI Money Clinic. No hype, just the right advice. Dear viewers, expert of the week is Chartered Accountant Mr. Sriram Rao. Mr. Sriram Rao is not somebody who is new to you. There are multiple videos he has done in the past on various aspects of taxation. Mr. Sriram Rao is a practicing Chartered Accountant, partner at Nitin J. Shetty and Co. He is a practicing direct taxation, a person who is specializes into NRI matters and a person who has, to his credit, solving many of the tough taxation related issues of his NRI client. Uh, welcome to this episode of Mr. Sriram Rao. Thank you. Uh, Sriram, there are a lot of questions in the minds of uh, people with respect to the parent card. Let's try to do a basic video today. Let's not presume that the audience knows certain things. So uh, let's get started from right from scratch. And for the benefit of our audience, let's give uh, what they need to know about the PAN. My first question is, what is PAN card and who needs it and when he needs it? PAN card is, uh, you know, the abbreviation of this, that is a permanent account number. And it is nothing but tax identification number, what we can call it as. And uh, this is PAN is a Indian tax identification number. And every single person, whether he is a resident, non-resident, Indian citizen, foreign national, OCI, whosoever it may be, if he wants to enter into any kind of financial transactions or investments or open a bank account in India, etc., at that time, he must have a PAN card in India. Uh, Mr. Shiran, if somebody has to apply for a PAN, how can he apply for a PAN? And what kind of documents are required to apply for a PAN? To apply for a PAN, that is a very simple process. There is both online and offline modes are available. If you are an Indian citizen, whether you are a resident or non-resident, you have a form called 49A. In that, you have to make an application. And if you are a person who is not an Indian citizen or a person is a foreign national, so then you have a form called 49AA in that you have to make an application. While applying, you will have to provide identity proof and a address proof. And if you are a Indian citizen having an Aadhaar card, then it is uh, mandatory for you to submit the Aadhaar card as one of the documents. But if you are not an Indian citizen or if you are not an Indian resident, then Aadhaar card is not mandatory. Apart from that, as an identity proof or address proof, a copy of the passport, the driving license obtained in India or outside of India, or uh, even the OCI card can be considered as a, one of the documentary evidence which are required. Further to elaborate, online application can be submitted via e-signatures, that is the Aadhaar based uh, e-signature, wherever that is feasible, or via digital signature. And if one is not having these uh, mechanisms, then he can always apply for offline mode of, uh, you know, uh, PAN application. And uh, one more thing, interesting point is, if you are a person who is living outside of India, always, uh, or barely you come down to India, you can always apply for a PAN card by being situated in, uh, outside of India and you need not come to India to obtain a PAN card. So that's perfectly possible. So people are under the impression that they have to come to India, search for some offices. That thing is not required. Today you can apply for PAN card online. Which website they have to go for applying for the PAN card? There are PAN application facilitators. Somebody called, I mean, uh, there is NSDL portal and UTI portals, etc. See, one of the things that NRIs get confused is, if you are a resident, there is a separate PAN card. And if you are an NRI or a OCI or a foreign national, there is a different types of cards which are available to them. So what do you have to say? Is there different types of cards available here or is it one and the same? How does the system uh, work eh, in this case? See, whether a person is a resident, a non-resident, Indian citizen, foreign national, OCI card holder, whoever it may be, the PAN is same. So if a person obtained a PAN, when he is a resident, 
or when he is a non-resident or as a foreign national or as an OCI, whatever the status he might be. And now there is a change in the residential status or citizenship status, etc. Then the only thing that he has to do is just update the details in the database of the PAN card. To update these residential status uh, change details or citizenship change details, he just have to apply online or offline to his jurisdictional assessing officer who has the records of yours. And you have to apply along with the documentary evidence of change of citizenship or residential status and ask him to change these uh, statuses to your PAN in the database. So, these status of change in residential or citizenship can only be you know, done by a jurisdictional assessing officer. It cannot be done by anybody else. So, there is no different PAN card or different type of PAN card for resident, non-resident, etc. It is one and the same. Do you mean to say that when a resident Indian uh, becomes a non-resident or vice versa or a OCI comes and lives back in India, he doesn't have to apply for change of PAN. Is this assumption correct? Absolutely. There is no required for change of PAN or getting a new PAN card. In fact, PAN card is one and the same and once a person obtains it, that is a unique number that is attached with that particular person till his uh, lifetime. Okay. So, he can update the details, whatever is required uh, in respect of that PAN card and the PAN number will remain the same. Whatever the you know changes that might happen, whether it's in uh, name, address, or uh, residential status, nationality status, whatever it may be, but he cannot apply for a new PAN card. In fact, applying for a new PAN card when a person is having already a uh, existing PAN card is violation of Income Tax Act, which can attract a penalty up to rupees ten thousand. And if there are usage of uh, multiple PAN cards. Then it might end up in a prosecution proceedings also if there is a misuse of those uh, double pan cards to the same person. Mr. Sridham, one of the problems, a rampant problem I would say is there is no standard procedures for recording the uh, data. For example, how to record your name, your first name, family name, father's name in the form of initials. So much of confusion. Likewise, the name of father's name. Uh, sometimes the date of birth is something different. What is recorded in the pan is different and it is giving rise to a lot of problems. And people like to sort out these issues and separate this thing. Suppose somebody has got a pan card and he wants this database to get altered to reflect his name as per the other documents. See, for example, he has an author card or he has a passport or he has a bank card. So the, all the documents have to be aligned and they suddenly see that the pan is not matching because of some spelling error or sequence or father's name not matching. This problem will come. If the person has got a PAN card and the data, can it be altered? What data can be altered? What cannot be altered? And if it can be changed, what is the process to follow? What is the documentary evidence that are required to alter the PAN? And how many times can he change it? Is it one time or is it uh, he can keep changing it uh, frequently? How does the system work in this case? Apart from change in the residential status and change in the citizenship status. All the other changes in the PAN record or PAN database rather can be done by way of filing and PAN correction application along with the documentary evidences of proof of identity as well as proof of address. So, if one might have to change the name, say their name is not aligned, the first name, middle name and surname or there is a spelling mistake or whatever it is or they have to change the address or sometimes they have to change the gender because by, you know, manual mistake or clerical mistake, male has become female or whatever it is. Or if there is a clerical mistake due to which the date of birth has mismatched, okay. Or if you have lost a PAN card, but you are aware of the PAN number, okay, but you have lost the PAN card as such. Or if you want to have a duplicate PAN card, PAN number will be same, but you will, you want one more PAN card. So under these facts and circumstances, one can apply for the required things through a PAN correction application. The PAN correction application is both online and offline. The modes are same and the required documentary evidences are also same. There is no number of times you can change the details in the PAN card. Any number of times you can apply. But you should have sufficient documentary evidences for, uh, you know, change of name or change of address or whatever it is. So, at the same time, if there are no different applications for resident, non-resident, non OCI, foreign national, etc. Unlike uh, the PAN application, you know, to obtain a new PAN card. 
So it's one and the only application for pan correction, whatever type of person you are. This is about uh, pan correction and the procedure is similar to pan application. But documentary evidences are also same. Shriram, one of the doubts that is there is whether minor children require a pan. Is it a must? Is it advisable? Uh, when should they have it? What care people should take when they apply for a pan for a minor child? If that minor is earning any income from active participation, for example, that minor is um, an artist you know, who acts in a movie or is a very good singer and uh, getting you know remuneration for you know doing all these activities. That is some type of physical activity through his talent or hard work, whatever it may be. If he is earning any income, at that time it becomes mandatory for that minor to have a pan. But in other circumstances, it is not mandatory for a minor to have a pan. However, minor can always have a pan. Okay, if there is no active participation or earning of active income by a minor, minor cannot apply for a pan. It's always an option for a minor to apply for a pan. But under any circumstances, the minor himself cannot apply for a pan. There should be a guardian who has to apply the pan in on behalf of a minor and he has to take care of the affairs of the minor. And once that person minor becomes a major, then the PAN number he had obtained when he was a minor, the same PAN number will continue. He just have to align the changes, whatever is there, as per the records in the PAN card, PAN database, that's it. So minor can always have a PAN, but it's not mandatory. These days, we get to hear something called an EPAN. Is it something different? What is this EPAN? Is there any advantage with an EPAN? or whether everyone should have an EPA. Is it different from a physical PAN? EPAN is nothing but an electronically available PAN for you. And uh, the PAN number is same, the details available is same, and it is similar to you know the PAN card you will get. But it is in a soft format. That means it is available to be downloaded in a soft format. It can be transmitted through emails, etc. Okay, so there is uh, nothing different about EPAN. But uh, it is only in the digital format that one uh, I can say. Okay, so ePAN is nothing but the same PAN. So it is more useful that way you can store it in a main folder or someplace and uh, instead of keeping it in a physical format, you keep it in a digital format. So nothing more uh, than that uh, when it comes to question of ePAN. Correct. One another burning issue is, now the government says that the PAN has to be linked to the other. And in case of NRIs, there is a lot of dialogues. People have got other card when they were in India, then they become non-president, then they became OCIs. The dilemma is there. I have got an other. I have got a PAN. I am not a resident Indian. I am an NRA or an OCI. Then do I need to link my Aadhaar and PAN? What is the clarity that the NRA should derive when it comes to question of clubbing the, the linking Aadhaar and uh, PAN? If an NRI or OCI has obtained Aadhaar in India, whether now or earlier point of time when he was a resident, then it is a must for him to link the same with the PAN. The exemption from linking of PAN and Aadhaar is available to only those persons who are NRI and OCI and who does not possess an other. If one has an other, then it is a must for him to link. Okay, so there is actually there is no confusion, but it is that, you know, uh, uh, one liner what they, uh, you know, mentioned that NRI OCIs are not required to link the PAN and other. No, it is not so. The notification does not say so. Our viewers have to keep in mind, first check whether you have an other. If you have an other, obviously you'll be having a PAN then don't get into any kinds of confusions. It is best that you link this Aadhaar and PAN. Whether you come back to India, continue to live outside of India, it's immaterial. But when you link Aadhaar and PAN, many of the problems can be solved. And at a later point of time, if you have to get into any kind of dealings in India, things will become silky smooth for you. In your best interest, please link Aadhaar and PAN card, and that's in your best interest. Uh, Mr. Shira, there are people who become NRIs. Until then, they were being assessed by the resident jurisdictional officer. Now, for uh, in case of NRX, do they need to change the jurisdictional officer to the international jurisdiction when they become NRX? Or is it something that they have to do when they suddenly become NRX? Now, most of the processes under Income Tax Act okay, are done through CPC, that is Centralized Processing uh, Center. And these processes are done through online boards. Hence, uh, whenever an SSE becomes a resident to non-resident or non-resident to resident, he need not keep on changing his jurisdictional officer from resident to international taxation or vice versa. 
that is not a must rather however if there is any procedure which requires to be carried out through a jurisdictional assessing officer at that time it becomes mandatory to have the correct jurisdictional officer okay that means if you are uh, you know have become a non resident from a resident and after becoming a non resident you are in a process of selling a property and you have to apply for a lower tax deduction certificate or your return of income has been processed through cpc but there is some mistake which needs to be rectified through a assessing officer then under these factual circumstances since the process are manual for those you know uh, areas of practice under these circumstances it becomes a mandatory for a person to change his jurisdiction from resident to international taxation or international taxation to resident as the case may be under the fact and circumstances of this case okay it is not a mandatory requirement as such but it is advisable to do say for example for quick resolution of uh, your issues okay whenever that issue comes up but if the jurisdiction is totally different and you have uh, some issues to be solved by a different jurisdictional officer then first you have to change the jurisdiction then only you can you know do this correction but if you are in the rightful correct jurisdictional officer immediately you can take action on this so all in all it is better for the nris to change the jurisdictional officer to the international uh, tax status so right. in case uh, if something were to be required to be done that again you will not be you know trying to do it at that point of time delays and other things as right. a part of uh, the usual uh, things to be kept in place or uh, move this pan to the international tax jurisdiction uh, right. so you can your commercial accountants or your chartered accountants to help you with that and we have also done the videos on uh, that particular topic before people can refer to right. that video which is there in the playlist on taxation and uh, you can specifically be guided one another question that comes to my mind is somebody gets a pan now new pan now when somebody has a pan will it automatically reflect in the it portal or somebody has to register this pan on the it portal is it to be done manually by the individuals or it system itself will uh, put them on the it portal the pan would always be available in the it portal's database the jurisdictional officer will always have the access to these pan cards the data in the pan cards etc however if the ssc or the person who is holding that pan card if he wants to see the data what tax authorities have in their position about his transaction then it is mandatory for him to register his pan card or it can also be you know certain compliances which needs to be carried out by him say file a return of income or say you know submit certain forms under income tax act or claim certain exemptions whatever it may be for those fact and circumstances it becomes mandatory for him to register this pan in the it portal under general fact and circumstances if a just a person just obtains a pan and does not carry out any financial transaction investment nothing but just for the sake of it he is holding a pan under those fact and circumstances it is not required for him to register his pan in the it like in case of a minor child somebody uh, obtained a pan but there are no uh-huh. transaction thing needs to be done so if Correct. it is not registered on the it portal it is not going to be be a major issue Correct. so all in all my understanding from what i heard from you is that income tax department will know your pan number but for you to know what kind of a transactions you have done or uh, you need to check what is there in the it database then it is you who have to register it on the it portal where in which you will also have an access to this particular uh, information right correct one more question that is there in the minds of people is i have a pan card i don't have income i have no financial transaction am i obligated to file the tax return is having a pan card is a requirement that i have to file my tax return is there a, what does the compliance requirement say in this case having a pan card by itself will not mandate one person to file his return of the person should be required to file return of income as per the provisions of income tax due to aggregate income that he has earned which becomes taxable or there is a tax liability to be paid by that particular person on certain type of income that he earns or due to certain other criteria wherein it becomes mandatory for that particular person to file his return of income under those fact and circumstances only the person will be required to you know have a pan card in fact we have done details videos on this who is required to file his return of income in that there are criteria that makes a 
person obligated to file a return of income. Otherwise, it is not mandatory to file a return of income. Uh, my last question to you, Shri Ram. There are people who have not used their PAN card for a long time. They do not know. See, I will tell you, this is a practical uh, issue with a lot of NRIs. They have moved out of India. And those are the initial years of PAN introduction. They don't remember whether they have got a PAN or not whether they have applied for a PAN card or not. They have left India decades together. But they could be working at that point of time and they just can't remember. Now, either they want to come back to India because of some transactions, they need to have a PAN. Now, you said if you already have a PAN, you cannot apply for one more PAN. It's an offense, right? And it can involve even prosecution if, things were, if you are misusing this uh, PAN card. How does a person come to know whether he has got a PAN card or not. Genial cases I am telling. I don't remember. I lived in India. What I did, I do not know now. Now, should I apply? If I apply, am I applying for a duplicate PAN card? How will they know that they are not applying for a second PAN card? Can they retrieve the previous PAN card for which they have applied? I want you to guide my audience very clearly the do's and don'ts and the procedure to follow in that case so that they should not be unnecessarily penalized or put into difficulty because of these things which have happened decades together back. Now, it's a very practical scenario. See, it is uh, a person who has obtained a PAN, then it becomes his obligation to maintain the PAN card. In certain cases, there is a possibility that he, that person has lost a PAN card. But at least if he has his PAN number, then he can obtain a duplicate PAN card. So, there is no issues. However, if he doesn't even remember that he has a, a PAN number and he has already obtained it a long time back. Then it becomes uh, highly difficult to you know get the details in this regard. However, if the name of the person, the name of his father and also the date of birth of that person, if that remains the same in the documentary evidences and the same documentary evidences are provided now while applying for a new PAN, the PAN issuance authority will raise a red flag saying that these records have already have a PAN card in the name, okay, in their name. However, they will not say what is the PAN number, but they will say only that much. See, matching of all these three criteria, the full name, the father's name and the date of birth is uh, highly unlikely and there cannot be any, you know, multiple situations where the same person is or different persons are having same name, same uh, father's name and same date of birth. So, this being the case, I would say while applying for a PAN, the person will come to know that he has already have a PAN because the PAN issuing authority will deny issuing the duplicate PAN. However, by some chance, this does not get detected or if uh, they say that, uh, you know, PAN is available, but they will not say what is the PAN number. Under these factors, circumstances to obtain the PAN number from the authorities, it becomes that much more difficult. You will have to apply, you know, and multiple follows may be required and ultimately you may get, but it, it is a very difficult scenario. Hence, under these situations, my sincere advice would be, you keep record of your PAN card in multiple places. In different places, say in email, Google Drive, soft, soft copies, hard copies, copies of the PAN card in different places, etc. You share with your, you know, close family, relatives, wife, children, etc. So that, you know, whenever you get lost of the, those PAN card or PAN number, it will be available with somebody else so that you can retrieve it. Yes, I, I fully agree and uh, my request with the audience is also same thing. Now, let's say that you obtained a PAN card for your minor child. The child may not know that you have applied for a PAN card for him. But his name, your name, child's date of birth is all there. And because of your negligence or ignorance, you lose this PAN card. And at a later point of time, when the child has to use another PAN card, there is a risk of losing this PAN card, unable to retrieve the PAN number. And child can be put into a lot of difficulty. So be very, very careful when it comes to question of PAN card. Save the PAN card's image. Save it in multiple places. If you are going to become an NRI in due course of time, or if you have a plan to go abroad where you don't use this PAN card very regularly, make sure that you secure it and remember it for future use. Do not play around with it. This is a, the most important record. And for each and every transaction without the PAN card, you can be literally, uh, it's like, you know, you are in a foreign land and you have no cash and you can't go anywhere. That's the kind of situation one can uh, land in. Just a small follow-up question, Shira. I have known these cases and people have approached us. Someone has a PAN and his PAN is being used by someone else. 
I don't know how it does happen. This is one issue. The second issue is someone has a duplicate. It's not intentional or whatever. It has happened for whatever the reason. And the gentleman has realized now that I have got two pack. What is the remedial measure? I told you two cases. One having duplicate pack, the remedial measure. And another case, his genuine pan is being used by someone else. The first case where the person is having a duplicate pan. So, in those circumstances when, I mean, a person having two pans, then one of them he has to surrender. You can always continue to use the pan which you have already been using. The other pan you can always surrender. And uh, many a cases have been found in recent past in our experience also that a particular person has been allotted two different pan numbers. Maybe due to certain uh, name uh, or spelling mismatches in the name or father's name uh, mismatches or date of birth mismatches or under different factors and circumstances, it has happened. So under these situations, we have made it sure that one pan which has not been used at all, that has been surrendered and uh, informed uh, through a you know proper letter to the jurisdictional assessing officer in this regard. However, uh, the special case comes uh, when a pan is being misused by somebody else. This is a very unfortunate situation. Under these circumstances, they do not have much of a remedy in their hand other than writing or raising a grievance in this regard to the jurisdictional assessing officer and tell them that so-and-so thing has happened, which is beyond our control and make sure that he takes necessary action in this regard. Once you write to the assessing officer, Keep the acknowledgement of uh, writing these uh, things to the jurisdictional assessing officer. And if there is any future consequences, you can always tell that I have already intimated these circumstances and uh, I am not aware of this transaction which has been entered by somebody else through my PAN card. And you can ask that, you know, try to find out uh, the person who is involved in that through the jurisdictional assessing officer. You don't have much to do about it. Uh, Mr. Sriram, thank you very much for this detailed explanations of different kinds of problems which exist with PAN. I'm very sure my audience today is well informed about almost all aspects of PAN. If you have forgotten any of the topics that we should have discussed here, I request the audience to please highlight these through the comments in the comment section below. Ask us the question. We are listening. Probably I will cover these points in one of the videos which we will do it in the future. You have any questions pertaining to the pan, specific situations because of which we have landed into trouble or you are not having the correct answers for that. Please highlight that and bring to our notice in the comment section and we will definitely try to do one more video and solve this particular problem for you. Thank you very much for your time and I remain in gratitude to you for your kindness to spare your time for the benefit of my audience. Thank you very much, sir. You're welcome. Dear viewers, hope the video that I've done today on PAN cards give you all the insights about every aspect of PAN card which you must know of. If it did give you this information, do not forget to give me a thumbs up. If you are a person who is watching my channel for the first time or if you are yet to subscribe, for the channel please hit the subscribe button and press the bell icon do not forget to share these videos with your near and dear ones friends and relatives and on all the whatsapp groups on which you are connected with. thank you very much for watching this episode on nri money clinic i shall be back with you next tuesday with yet another expert on yet another topic till then stay safe jai hey press the bell icon for more details and subscribe our channel